Hi, this is Craig Stocks with Craig Stocks Arts. This is the second of three videos looking at how we can use combinations of Lightroom and Photoshop to visualize our pictures hanging on the walls either in our rooms or in the, the rooms or homes of our clients. And in the first video we looked at using just Lightroom, either version 2 or version 3, and that worked fairly well. Uh, one drawback though was that we were forced to work with just a square on view of the wall since we can't work with perspective and vanishing points inside of Lightroom. In this version, second video, we'll look at how we can use Photoshop and work with the vanishing point filter to be able to visualize our artwork on walls that are not square to the camera uh, so that we can get a what I think is a more more photorealistic preview of what those photos will look like. And we can also add frames and mats and be a little bit more creative and elaborate with how we visualize the pictures. So let's jump into Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop version CS5, although nothing here is really unique to CS5. It'll work with many of the earlier versions as well. We want to do a couple different things here. The first thing we need to do is define the planes of these two walls where we want to put our pictures. And we'll do that using the vanishing point filter. And we'll do a lot of our work actually inside the vanishing point filter uh, as far as pasting and moving the pictures around. But first we need to just create the plane. Uh, and by default it comes in with the create plane tool active. And to do that we just click on some of the lines that help define the plane. For instance, this corner where the wall meets the ceiling. And then I'll click a second point right here. A third point just following that corner down. And then the fourth point along the front of the sofa is a guideline and I'm getting a vertical line. And for some reason, you can see that it's outlined in red here. For some reason, Photoshop doesn't like that. So let's start over. The red outline means that it, it doesn't think that that's a good plane to work with. A blue filter, or a blue grid, is one that it likes. A yellow grid is one that it can work with, but it's not ideal. And just by tweaking this point a little bit, we managed to, to get this to turn blue. So now I can drag the grid out so that it covers the whole wall. And let's check one more thing. We know this couch is about seven feet long and we've got one, two, three, four, about four and a half grid divisions along here. Let's adjust the size of the grid. We can make it smaller so that we can get about one, two, three, four, five. We want, we'd like to get about seven grid divisions along the back of that couch. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll go one more. And that should give us about seven now. Now the second thing we want to do is create a grid on this other wall. We'll do that by holding the control key and then dragging out on this control point. And that pulls out a second plane perpendicular to the first one. It doesn't quite line up, but we can hold down the alternate key or the option key on a Mac and swing this plane around so that it lines up with the wall. And it's a little tricky. You can also use the angle adjustment here and we'll fine tune that, drag it out a little bit. And at this point, we're done with the, our first round of using the, the vanishing point filter. Now, I don't want to hit cancel, but I want to hit OK. And what that'll do is save these definitions. So let's go get our pictures that we want to drop on the wall. And to do that, first I want to put a frame around here. And I've got an action that I'm going to run that will create the frame and the mat. And in the third version, third video, I'll show the simple steps that I use to create that mat. You can see on the layers that it's really just primarily layer styles creating all of that. So let's just quickly flatten the image. And then we want to copy this onto the clipboard. So edit, 
Well, first we need to select all or control A, edit, copy or control C. Now we can come back here to our room and we know we want to put this on a separate layer. So let's add a new layer and now we'll go back into the vanishing point filter and this is the the secret to working with it. You have to work within the vanishing point filter and now I can press control V to paste that picture and it doesn't look all that uh, interesting to start with but as I drag it into the plane you'll see it adopts the shape of the plane and I can go into a free transform or use the transform tool here or control T hold the shift key to constrain proportions and make this bigger or smaller and position it where I think it looks best maybe make it a little bigger and you can see as I move it around it automatically follows the the plane of that wall so when we're done when we're when we're happy with how it looks just press OK and there's one more thing that I'd like to do to dress this up a little bit and that's to add a drop shadow so I'll just double click on the layer here and click on the word drop shadow and I want to uncheck global light because in this case the light is primarily going to be coming from this lamp so I know I need on this wall you need an, an angle over here and maybe make the the shadow a little bit larger now it looks like that light is actually casting a shadow on the wall and that's how we can add the photo to that wall now if we want to add a second photo let's say we want to put this picture on the other wall again we'll add the frame so I'll go to my actions and run the action that creates the frame around the photo flatten the image I've done some experimenting trying to find a way to do this with smart objects so that it would be editable and have not been successful finding that. So that would be a really useful tool if you if you could do that. So control A to select all, control C to copy. Come back over to our room. Again, we want to add a layer. Now we want to go back to the vanishing point filter and control V will paste this image and as I drag it in you can see it follows the contours we know that's way too big so control T to transform and I'll hold the shift key and make this smaller and move it over to this wall something like that and click OK and again we want to add a drop shadow but this time the light will be coming from the other side so again I'll uncheck use global light so that I can have a distinct light source for each layer and again we'll make this a little bit larger and there's our finished image zoom in a little bit so we can visualize not only the pictures but also frames mats and obviously we could change the colors of the frame size of the frame the colors of the mats and so forth uh, to give us a view that very closely represents what we would like to deliver to our clients so that pretty much wraps up the second video uh, in the third video I'll show the shortcuts and the, the actions and, and layer styles that I use to create the mat and the frame for these pictures. So hope you've enjoyed this and have a good day.